Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory, and today I'm going to be uh, making two recipes with garden veggies. So I'm super excited about this. It has been a very long time since I've cooked with you guys. So it's a day in the kitchen today, and I'll tell you more about that as we get going, but I'm working on just a bunch, bunch of things in the kitchen, so I thought I would just keep going and um, share with you all while I'm doing it. So I've got two really easy um, projects, recipes for you to try. They're great. They're perfect with garden veggies, farmer's market veggies, wherever you are um, getting your goodies right now. Um, so like I said, I have been um, busy today doing several projects here in the kitchen, and so I'm just going to keep that going today with two things for you. So we are going to make refrigerator, refrigerator pickled cucumbers, so yummy with my misshapen garden veggies. And we're gonna make pickled beets. So if you like pickle things, you're in for a treat. If you don't, these might not be your favorites. So I have put the really brief recipe for the cucumbers in the description of this video because I don't really have it written down somewhere. I totally just kind of make it up as I go every time. And so, You'll see as I make it how simple it is. Um, so we can go with that. And then the other thing is um, the beets. I've given you the recipe as a link because I have written that up. So I've just done my shares. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up. Oh, sorry. On, my phone is actually kind of far away to see the comments. So I'm gonna try and keep track of them on um, the computer today. So if you guys have comments or questions along the way, please go ahead and leave them and um, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. So like I said, I have been working in the kitchen today. I've got two things in progress right now. I have this um, roasted, can you kind of see it? Roasted squash soup that I'm working on. That, I don't think it tastes like squash. I think it tastes more like sweet potato and it's really savory. It has tons of seasoning, coconut milk. It's so yummy. And I've been um, taking photos and writing up the recipe along the way. So I will be sharing that with you next week. And then I've also been making my weekly loaf of sourdough, which is in the oven and you'll get to see it um, when it comes back. So I am not a canner. My garden is about the size of my kitchen island. It's not huge. So I don't can anything for real, but I love refrigerator pickle things because they're easy. You just make them, wait a few hours, and you can eat them right up. You don't have to you know, take a lot of space. So um, that's why these projects are, these recipes are great because they're ready same day. You get to enjoy them and they're not very much work. So uh, my garden this year has beans, cucumbers, which I'm trying to grow up on a trellis and they're kind of going all over crazy, but that's my goal is to grow on the trellis as well I can pick them easy. Um, beets, tomatoes, basil, onions, had some lettuce, but that's gone. Next year I really wanna grow um, kale. So if you have a must grow thing that works well in small spaces, I'd love to hear about it. I'm all about what can produce the most in the smallest amount of space because I don't have a lot of it. So we're gonna start with the cucumbers. Um, and just so you know, I've already pre-boiled the beets. So if you were gonna make this and you wanted to get ahead of it, um, one thing you'd wanna do is make sure you're boiling these beets um, for about 30 minutes ahead of time. And that's all that information is in the pickled beet recipe that's linked in the description of this video. So you can go ahead and click through um, if you wanna check that out, but that's yummy. And then. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, make these refrigerator 
cucumbers. Um, and I don't think this bowl is going to be big enough, so we'll keep out both. But um, I've already sliced some of the cucumbers, and you can see that I'm just really slicing them. This is a really tasty skin cuke, so I'm just leaving that on. And I've also put some garden onions in here because I like them pickled. Um, and they don't really affect the flavor of everything. So I'll eat the onions, and then everyone else will enjoy the um, pickles. I will say they don't really taste like pickles. So if you're thinking in your head, this is gonna be easy pickles, it doesn't have dill and all those other flavors that make a pickle a pickle, but it is a vinegary, salty, totally delicious treat. Okay, and my kids do all like them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and slice the cucumbers. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really love once you can see all the seeds in the cucumber. To me, that cucumber got too big. So I like them when they're like this and the seeds aren't really formed. Um, that's fun, Shelly. I know my mother-in-law, it's on Saturdays in, um, it's so easy it's on Saturdays in Iowa where she is. So she'll often send me a text on Saturday. I just saw you on TV, but it's on different places every, everywhere. So anyway, I'm gonna try these ones even though I think they're really too big because I won't eat any, we won't eat them plain once they've got those seeds in there. So we're gonna try and keep them um, we'll try them in here. If they're not good, then we won't eat those ones. Okay, so however you like to slice, if you have a food processor and want to slice on there, that'd be easy. I bought two different kinds of cucumbers this year. They're not pickling cucumbers. One, oh, and I'm not gonna think about what the other one is. One is a Japanese cucumber. They're all supposed to look like this. Long, thin, not very many seeds not really pokey on the outside, so yummy for just snacking and eating, which is what my kids wanna do, right? They just wanna snack and eat, whether it's pickled like this, in their school lunch boxes, or you know, however you wanna do it, but this is the kind we like. So I know Japanese are definitely the long, thin, and I'm not sure what the other one is, but if you're not making pickles, you don't really want pickling cucumbers. They have a lot of bumps on the outside. They get fast really big, or really quick. They get big really fast. Um, and so those aren't your like first choice of um, cucumbers, unless you're making a ton of cucumbers, and if you're, or pickles. And if you're making a ton of pickles, well then go for it and do it. Okay, I'm just bringing up um, my pickled beet recipe because I want to remember. So, okay. So next, this cucumber recipe doesn't have any measurements. Okay, so, and it's my mom's recipe. She doesn't measure. I've kind of adapted it. I don't measure, which is why I think it's not officially on my website. It's just, you can't really mess it up. You can just keep adding to it if you don't love the flavor, okay? So put your pickled, uh, put your cucumbers, put your onions. Um, those are the only really two things I've done like this, but I can imagine other things would be yummy too. So to think about what else would be good in this um, salt and vinegar mixture. Um, but I put my fruit, my veggies in here. Then you take salt and this part is a little, shall we check the sourdough? Okay, so like I said, I'm in the middle of two things. One is the soup making, which is kind of paused until um, I finish this. And the other one is I make one loaf of sourdough a week. It's not ready, but I'll just show you. It's looking absolutely delicious, but it needs to go in for long. Um, okay, so that's my, my bread loaf for the week. And I thought, I was very intimidated by sourdough. I bought a starter off Amazon. I talked to my brother a little bit who's been doing it longer than I have. And I just kind of started. 
and I've pretty much developed a really easy way to make sourdough. I don't have any special, that Dutch oven is about the only special tool I have. I just use regular things from around my kitchen. I use flour, water, salt, oil, and starter. So there's like no bad ingredients, unless you're avoiding flour, in it. And so I thought next week, it takes me two days to bake. So I thought maybe next week I would record each of the steps along the way. None of them are time consuming. You just have to like do all the waiting in between. Um, but I might put that all together in like an easy sourdough recipe. I don't know, because I was super overwhelmed and I just want to see someone do it, right? How do they mix up the batter? How do they fold? And there's a lot of like written about it, but I feel like there's not a lot of um, like a single flow about the whole thing, at least that I found. So we'll see. Okay, so back to the pickles. So you take um, your pickles and your onions, which I have. Um, if your cucumber skins have been better, should you peel? So you mean they're not very yucky? I mean, they are yucky. Yeah, if you don't like, if you don't like your skins or they're really tough, I would definitely peel them or at least peel Sometimes I'll peel like half of it in sections and so there'll be little strips of green just for some texture. But if it is rough and bitter, I think you meant bitter, um, I would definitely peel. Um, I, think, I think they do help with the crispness, but again, if they're really bad, I would take some of them off. So usually I'll take a cucumber and I'll like go strip down rotate, strip down, rotate, strip down, and I leave um, bits of green in between those strips. That will still give you the crispness without uh, most of the bitterness. Okay, so then you're gonna take, and this is gross. This seems so gross to me. I'm not a salt person. Um, I'm like a pepper person and other flavorings, but you're not gonna drink this, at least if, if you want a lot of salt, you might drink it, but cover the top cover the top with salt, okay? So that is what we're doing today, covering the top with salt. Now that seems gross, but that's what we're gonna do. So you cover the top with salt, then, sorry, I gotta come over here and grab my vinegar. I forgot to get that out. Then you're gonna take um, your vinegar. I like to use apple cider, but you can also use um, white distilled, whatever you have. And you're going to fill up the bowl until you can just start to see the vinegar come up through the pickles or the cucumbers. Okay, so it's not completely covered, but I'm starting to see along the edges, I can see my vinegar, okay? And then you're going to take water and you're going to pour water over it until it is completely covered. So it is probably 80% vinegar and only 20% water by the time you've made your mixture. And then you're gonna get a spoon. We're gonna stir it up just a little bit because we pour all that salt right on top. Oops, this is not really in a good spot. Okay, and then all you do Pop it in the refrigerator for three or four hours. This will totally be ready by dinner time now. And, and then we'll get to eat it. You can kind of try the, it tastes like salt and vinegar, which I love that flavor, by the way. Um, but the pickles really, or the cucumbers really take on that flavor and it's just delicious. So, um, you always drink, but my daughter loves pickle juice too. I just think uh, if you're watching your salt, I wouldn't drink that much of it because there is a lot of salt in it. Okay, so that's it. Salt, vinegar, water. I don't know the measurements because it's different every time I make it based on how much is in there, but I promise you it's really good. You should try it. It's not ready yet. I, it would just taste like a cucumber if I ate it now, but you'll kind of get an idea of the flavor if you try the broth. 
And the other thing is, before I move on to the beets, because I won't come back to this, is that if we eat all these cucumbers out over the next two days, I will save this brine and use it again um, for about a week. So you just add fresh cucumbers or add fresh onions and you can keep using it. The cucumbers and the onions themselves don't taste too good after about three days. So I would try to eat all this in the next three days and then once they're all out, you can add a fresh batch. So you can use, reuse your salt and vinegar um, for about a week. So maybe two batches out of it and you don't have to dump it. So if you have more veggies coming, don't get rid of this as soon as this is gone, okay? Yum. So we're gonna put this in the refrigerator. And that is my refrigerator pickled cucumbers. Not really pickles, we pick pickled cucumbers. You know, there. Okay, so now we're going to gather what we need for the beets. So this recipe is a little bit different. This actually does have measurements um, and you can find those um, in the link that I've put in the description of this video. So I've got my beets and what you do to boil the beets is you chop off the stem to about one inch, clean off the dirt. These came right out of the garden. If they're from the store, they won't have that much dirt on them. But clean off the dirt, cut off the stems to one inch and then boil them for about 30 minutes. You don't wanna try, you wanna try not to cut into the beet skin, because um, if you do, you'll lose all that beautiful purple color. And actually, my favorite is making these with multi-colored multi beets, because it's just beautiful. But I only have grown purple beets. So, um, and you wanna make sure that it's really, that you're really being careful because the beet juice is, you know, very stainy. Um, Shelly, I bet jalapenos would be very good in that pick in the salt and vinegar. Very good. And Mandy, hi, good to see you too. It has been a um, long time. I'm glad you're here. Uh, okay, so we are gathering what we need for the beets. I'm going to reuse this bowl. So I'm just going to rinse it out. Again, be careful where you're spraying your beet juice. There's a reason I don't <laughs> buy pomegranates and that's because of the juice. So I could say the same thing for beets except for I just like them so much. Um, all right, so beets, let me click over here to the recipe. I was gonna write it down, then I didn't. Um, we need salt, sugar, um, apple cider vinegar, and water. So really the only addition to the pickled beets is a little bit of sugar which I think makes him very tasty, a little tasty addition. Um, so you could probably make it without the sugar, but I think it adds a really nice um, flavor and still is very, very simple. Okay. All right, so the first step is what takes the longest and that is to simply boil the beets. So remember, don't puncture the skin, don't poke it with a fork, try not to cut it, just cut down the stems, and then, um, sorry, cut down the stems, clean off the dirt, and then boil with water for about 30 minutes. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna cut off the stems and the bottoms, because my beets have these really weird tuber things going on, I'm not sure why, and the skins, should just kind of peel off. Probably should be wearing an apron for this, for this splatter, but I don't even know. I'm not an apron wearer and I don't really have one handy. Okay, so I'm just gonna peel this off. So we're peeling the beets and I boiled these yesterday, so they're cold. Um, but if you've just peeled them or just boiled them, you'll wanna wait until they're cool enough to touch before you peel them. And then you just slice them. If you have fat beets that are bigger than bite size, you might wanna cut down the middle before you slice them. Yes, this is the pickle beet recipe, which I love. This is the only way I'll eat beets. Um, and then the other one's the cucumbers. So the skins should just kind of peel off. If they don't, you can get a knife to help you or um, a peeler. But because I boiled them, they should, 
should just kind of come off. Okay. And then I'm just, as I, they're all clean, so as I finish peeling, I'm just gonna slice them right into the bowl. And I don't know if my soil is hard or what, but I ended up with these tiny beets. I don't know, they've been growing out there for forever. Some of them are huge, but most of them are these really tiny things. So I I really don't know what I did. I don't, maybe I didn't give them enough space. I, I, this is the first year I've grown beets. Um, yeah, gloves would probably be a good idea too. I'm not so worried about my hands. And this is one of my favorite shirts. It's the woman's crossback tank. I know many of you have sewed that from my free pattern library, but it's so comfortable. I have three or four of them now and I practically live in them in the summer because the knit is cool and airy. And I like that it's not like spaghetti straps, but it's still sleepless. When it's hot, I'm not a big sleep person. It is still very hot here. Yes, Lisa, so I grew the beets in my garden. I have a tiny garden. I don't know, it's maybe five feet by seven feet, eight feet, it's, it's not very big. But into it, I have crammed cucumbers, onions, beets, tomatoes, um, what else, lettuce, but that's all gone. That was in the, oh, time to check the bread again. I have a funny gardening story when I come back to about something we were growing and then realized it probably wasn't, didn't need to grow it. So bread cooks at, the sourdough cooks at 450. So every time I open the oven door, my mascara like melts into my eyelashes. All right, we're gonna go seven more minutes on the beets. But so we have, the small garden and then in addition to that I have some extra tomatoes growing in some like large pots I used to have flowers in and then I decided I'd rather grow tomatoes so um, I'm trying to grow tomatoes in these pots and in one of the pots with the tomatoes we put a jalapeno plant because my husband really loves um, like jalapeno poppers some version you know whether it's even just cream cheese in them and we have an air fryer and so we love just you know putting them in the air fryer but so we've been growing this jalapeno plant and it got, it, it, it's had, we've picked maybe 10 so far and it has maybe 10 more on it. Um, and they're, you know, they're taking their sweet time growing and we pick them when they're ready. But I was at the grocery store last week and I bought jalapenos and they were 99 cents a pound. So I bought five pretty good sized peppers and it was 43 cents. So. I'm thinking if we just want them for jalapeno poppers a few times during the summer that growing them is not really very cost effective considering I bought five big ones for 43 cents. <laughs> I mean, tomatoes get expensive when we buy a lot because we all love tomatoes, you know? So beans, you just, they don't taste as good. Same with tomatoes, they just really don't taste as good. Um, you know, there's some things that you're like, wow, this is really worth it to grow in the garden. And then there's some things that I'm learning, maybe not so worth it. So um, I was at a friend's house and she had kale and that was growing like all, all summer, even in the hotter weather. And I do love kale. So that's something I might try next year. Maybe instead of lettuce, or maybe I'll do lettuce. You know, lettuce is really a short season and then it gets too hot. So we'll see. All right, we're almost done peeling these. Um, I'm just peeling and slicing. And I will be purple, but my nails are already maroon, so just blend right in. You wanna make sure that when you boil these, especially if they're um, bigger beets, that they, that they are soft. You can kind of stick a fork in it and it doesn't have to be squishy. I like it a little bit firm, but I definitely don't want them um, to be not cooked. So make sure your beets are cooked before you 
take them out of the water. All right, last one, and then I'll move this mess out of the way and wash my hands. Ooh, that one peeled beautifully. And I would assume this is a recipe, as you got more comfortable with it, that you could also do like I do the cucumbers where you don't really measure. You just kind of dump some things in and know that it tastes pretty good every time. But I haven't made this, I mean I do make it a few times every summer, but because this is the first time I've grown beets, I've never had like a lot where I make it over and over and over. I usually just purchase them a couple times during the summer to make the recipe and then um, I'm finished. But this is the second time already I've made them and I still have more beets in the garden. So I'm excited um, this summer. Okay. I'm gonna grab a spoon. Yes, my hands are a little bit pink, but it'll wear off. Uh, okay, so we want to have about eight medium beets. I had a few more than that, but some were really tiny. So you could probably have about this many beets or maybe one beet more and still work with the recipe. Half a tablespoon salt. This is a tablespoon measuring, so I'm just gonna fill it up about halfway. Then two tablespoons sugar. Again, this is the same recipe on my website, so you can um, click the link to find it if you want it. And then, um, again, the apple cider vinegar, we just pour in um, till it's about three fourths full. So another sort of estimation. And then the last fourth, again, is water. And that just dilutes the vinegar a little bit, makes it not quite so strong. But we still have a really yummy vinegary flavor in here. So stir a little bit to mix that sugar and the salt. These recipes are very similar. This one is just less salt. The other one is definitely a saltier vinegar flavor. And then this one um, just has a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar, and then the more vinegar. So I think it complements the flavor of the beets really well. And this would be the same thing. You could probably keep your same brine if you ate all these beets and you could add to it as long as you know you don't keep it forever. Okay, so I'm also gonna pop this in the refrigerator. And then I have pickled beets and pickled cucumbers for later. And I was hoping the bread would be done. Well, I guess we have one more minute on it. So I can show you guys um, the, my beautiful loaf, but we'll, I'll show you and then, um, yeah, does anyone have any questions today? While we're just waiting just a minute for that to finish up. Do you guys see my new mug? Look at this. So cute, right? Has my logo on it. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, yeah. The beets look too, so good. I know not everyone likes beets, but I really do like the pickled beets. And, oh, when I reach up and put that um, sugar away, you guys can see the back of my tank top really nice. Okay, so I don't know if it's done. Okay, I will take recommendations of kitchen timers. When I went to Walmart, this was the only one they had. It was 98 cents and it's a piece of junk. I mean, it keeps the time, but as soon as I hit it, it falls right off. I don't love that. And, um, yeah. Anyway, so if anyone has a recommendation of a kitchen timer they love, I will take recommendations. I'm willing to buy another one. Okay, so this, I'm gonna take the internal temperature, but look at it. Yummy. So good, right? 
So I like to check, I like the bottom to be a little bit darker. And the top has burst open nicely. Well, that's a good idea to screw a strong, glue a stronger magnet on it. You don't have to grow them, you can buy beets. And if you buy them, buy the multicolored ones because they are so pretty, especially when they're pickled. There's yellow and the orange and the purple ones. Mm. They are so good. So you want the internal temperature of a sourdough loaf to be 190, which mine is. And then um, usually you let it rest like a roast <laughs> for about an hour before you open it um, or before you cut into it. And then that will continue to cook it inside. Now my brother who has taught me most of what I know about making sourdough, he likes the crust really dark and really crunchy. I don't like it as dark and crunchy because my kids are eating it and so you know I want them to be able to chew it so I probably am gonna stop here which means I'll turn the inferno off nothing like having your oven on 450 when it's 97 degrees out but pretty nice huh yummy so yes since <laughs> The co since COVID and when we were home in late March, I bought a sourdough starter off Amazon and I have just made these. Uh, so I bake once a week. I keep it really low key. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested at all in baking sourdough and you don't know where to start, look in the next couple weeks because I will be sharing a video that really walks you through everything and it answers all the questions that I was really confused about um, when I started. And I like to keep it really simple. So I don't want to complicate things. I don't have time in my life to like baby a loaf of bread um, the way maybe my brother does who doesn't have kids running around and um, all the not, he has one baby. But you know, it's just different when you have more time. Although now that he's back working, it's probably different. So anyway, I will be sharing about that. And then, um, Let's see, canning beets. The jars hit the AC and exploded. Oh my goodness. Shelly, that is crazy. I know. Beet juice does kind of look like a murder scene. So, all right, I'll answer one sourdough question, Patricia, and then um, I will answer your sourdough questions uh, soon. So, if you want your starter to last longer and you don't have to feed it, so I, only, I feed mine once a week. So, here's my schedule real quickly. On Tuesday morning, a timer goes off and I take my sourdough starter out of the refrigerator. Which is really only, down, up, it's just a tiny bit in this jar. So I take it out of the refrigerator Tuesday morning and I feed it and then I, I feed it one to one. So I know how much this jar weighs, 442 grams. So I put it on my scale, I see how much starter's in there and then I add that much more water and that much more flour and I mix it with a fork. Then I don't put the lid on completely, but I do put the lid back on and I let it sit out of the refrigerator all day Tuesday. And you can pick whatever, of course, whatever day of the week you want. Okay, my feeding day is Tuesday. So I, on Tuesday I feed it and then it grows. And then by Tuesday afternoon my jar is about three fourths full of fed starter and then Tuesday after Tuesday evening usually I'll mix up my recipe and I'll do some folding Tuesday night before I go to bed this as soon as I've made my bread this goes back in the refrigerator and I don't touch it again till the following Tuesday morning okay so that is easy okay so I just leave that in there from Tuesday to Tuesday and um, then, so I make my bread Tuesday night. I stretch and fold it a couple times. I leave it in a bowl on the counter to rise all Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, which was this morning. I shaped my loaf. I put it into a nice round ball. I put that in the refrigerator until after lunch on Wednesday, and then I baked it. And then this bread will only last about, um, it doesn't last the whole week. I just don't want to have 
all the bread in the house. I think ideally you'd want to bake maybe twice a week, but I don't, we don't, I don't want that much bread. Um, I want to see other things. So if you want bread all week long, yes, you'd either have to cut this in half and like freeze half of it, or you could make two loaves on Wednesday, which I've done to like give one away. Make two loaves on Wednesday, put one in the freezer or one in the refrigerator. It will last longer if you put it in there. And then, um, there you go. Yes, this will be mostly eaten for dinner. So essentially, I bake on Wednesdays. We eat it Wednesday night for dinner with soup or tomatoes or something like that. And then we don't have sourdough again until the next week because we would just eat it. We would eat it and eat it and eat it and eat it and eat it. And none of us need that much sourdough in our life, even though it is delicious. So that's why I only bake once a week. It's probably mostly to limit our intake of it. And then for sandwiches and other things, I'll buy like one other loaf of bread from the store um, to pack sandwiches a couple times a week for my kids. So that's how I only bake once a week. And my sourdough starter is absolutely fine in the refrigerator. You can't leave it out on the counter, but you can leave it in the refrigerator. And it's good to go. And I would do the same thing baking twice a week. I would just keep it in the refrigerator in between, pull it out, feed it, bake, pull it out, feed it, bake a couple times a week. So, all right. Yes, so yeah, Shelly, you could do totally do that. And then you don't have to bake more than once a week because it is a little bit finicky. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit and then I'm gonna crack it open and enjoy probably a slice of sourdough before I have to go get my kids from school. Um, it's yummy. Okay, thank you guys for joining me. Check out the pickled cucumber recipe in the description of this video. Click through for the beets if you like pickled beets. And next week I will sew again for those of you who enjoy watching me sew more than cooking, but it's what I was doing today. So I thought I would share it with you guys. So thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate you all being here and the fun discussion and I will see you again soon. Have a great week.